When I was in graduate school, I had a teacher named John Stewart who used to say that if you can name what you want um, in life and as an artist, you may be able to get what you want. And what he was talking about is he would uh, say things like, People who really know clothing and know fashion um, are capable of saying what brand they want, what the stitching should look like, what kind of thing that they want, the shoe, the brand, uh, the style, the uh, even sometimes the year it was made, things like that. And I've been thinking a lot about that as I've been making these videos. So one of the things about making art is being able to name or at least label what you're trying to do in your work of art. And in this instance, I was thinking about the fact that I already have a painting that was done before, and even when I was working on this painting, I understood what I was trying to do before I even made it. And I wanted to talk a little bit about composition, color, degas, and sort of labeling what you want. One of the first things I do when I'm making a painting is I pre-mix a lot of the colors that I'm going to use. Of course, I modulate them and change them as I'm working, but one of the things that kind of happens when I'm painting is I already know or have a roadmap in my mind of what the painting's going to look like. So I thought, oh gosh, this was, would be a, a good example or a good way to show you some things in terms of what I was trying to accomplish before I made this painting and the process of doing it. So one of the first things about making a painting that I think about has to do with the idea that of composition, more or less. So this photograph that I got from the web, um, I just download tons of images from Tumblr and, and other sources to base paintings on. And when I'm looking at the photo or uh, the image that I'm planning on making a painting of, I always think, what am I attracted to? What am I interested in about this image? And a lot of the time it has to do first with the content of the image. So this guy is a very good looking young man and he has a beautiful torso and his arms are very attractive and he's wearing a tank top which is also nostalgic and I love that James Dean hair he has, that sort of swoop of hair that's falling over his, his forehead. But the composition of this is really boring. Um, it's just a uh, studio shot and one of the things that I learned from a, another professor who was teaching at Ohlone, uh the college where I was a professor, um, and I was curating a show of hers and she started talking about um, one of the things that she learned in photography school was something that she called the rule of thirds. Um, and I, she showed me how um, on cameras and in visual imagery uh, and even um, uh, digital cameras and things like that, they usually have this sort of grid 
that's made into, uh, it's, it divides the picture plane into thirds. Now, what she talked about with that was that when she was taught to compose a photograph, she was taught to put something in, in the quarters of each of the images. And I thought, oh, well, I use a grid to transfer my drawings. Why don't I start thinking about that in terms of composition? So whenever I make a painting, um, the first thing I do is I think about how does this image um, attract me? What about it? And so I already talked about his hair, the tank top, his arms. And one of the things that I've often thought of is you don't need both arms to show that this guy has beautiful arms, that he's attractive. And so in the first image, what I did was I, I shifted the figure completely over and I just included one arm and I included the parts of the face that I thought were interesting and I cropped down on the figure for the most important things. Now the proportions of the canvas that I'm working on now are very different. They're 24 by 36. And so what I did, um, and if you watched my last video, you've seen this, I used a projector to lay out about 10 24 by 36s, so I planned a, ahead of time what the compositions were going to be like before I even started doing the drawing with crayon on the canvas. And so this is the composition that I came up with. So one of the things about the composition that I think is really important is to have a symmetrical composition or to have an asymmetrical composition. Asymmetrical compositions are much more interesting and important. And in images like this, one of the things that I also think is important is to put the focal points in those quadrants that's like one of the quarters and one of the quarters of the image. So I use the grid mark that I often use to make the drawing or to, to figure out how to do things when I'm just sketching things onto the canvas. I use them to plan my composition as well. And so you can see that in this. And it's not, and just to give you a couple more examples of that. For instance, um, this is a photograph by a friend of mine named Lee Faircloth. And I've actually made a painting from this in the past. Um, and I've made several paintings uh, from this image. I'm really taken with, with this uh, model and with this image in general. But for me, I thought, well, I don't need the rest of the image to make it interesting for me. I only need one of his arms and part of his torso. So in one version of, of this image that I painted, what I did was I shifted it over and I used a very similar composition to the one that I just showed you with the painting I'm going to make today. And so initially, this is what my composition looks like and what I projected onto the canvas and sketched out. So one of the things that I think is kind of relevant is that asymmetrical compositions are a little bit more of how real life is. And it's one way of thinking about working with images. So I'm going to just uh, start painting on this. And uh, I'll speed up the, the camera. And you can watch me um, lay this in and start the underpainting. <laughs> 